Good day everyone. We begin the study of methods of solving differential equations by learning how to solve all the major forms of ordinary first order equations. Today, I'm going to show you some video tutorials on how to solve some, if not all, of the ordinary first order equations. So, let's do it. We will find a general solution to the equation y prime plus y squared sine x is equal to 0, which satisfies the given condition y of 0 is equal to 0. This is clearly a separable differential equation. So, solution. We will transform the y prime into dy over dx. So, the equation will now be dy over dx plus y squared sine x is equal to 0. Transposing the second term to the right-hand side, will give us dy over dx is equal to negative y squared sine of x. Multiplying both sides by dx and 1 over y squared will give us dy over y squared is equal to negative sine x dx. Integrating both sides yields y to the negative 1 over negative 1 is equal to cosine x plus a constant c. Simplifying the equation, will give us negative 1 over y is equal to cosine x plus a constant c. Therefore, y is equal to negative 1 over cosine x plus c. If y of 0 is equal to 0, then 0 is equal to 1 over 1 plus c. And the given equation is so if we set 0 is equal to 1 over 1 plus c, then y of x is equal to negative 1 over cosine x plus c as only the trivial equation y is equal to 0. We will find a solution to the equation y prime plus y is equal to e to the x which satisfies the given condition y of 0 is equal to 2. This is a linear differential equation. So solution. We will transform y prime into dy over dx. So the equation will now be dy over dx plus y is equal to e to the x. Finding the integrating factor, we will use e of x. Then v is equal to e raised to the power of the integral of dx. Then v is equal to e to the x. Multiplying the original equation to the integrating factor gives us dx of y e to the x is equal to e to the x times e to the x. Integrating both sides, we will let u be 2x and so du will be equal to 2 dx. Therefore, dx is just one half of du. Then, y e to the x is equal to one half e to the 2x plus a constant c. Therefore, c is equal to y e to the x minus 1 half e to the 2x. We will now substitute 0 to x and 2 to y. So the equation will now be c is equal to 2 minus 1 half. Then c is just 3 halves. We will divide the whole equation by e to the x. Then y is equal to 1 half e to the x plus c e to the negative x. And we will substitute 3 halves to c. Then the equation will be y is equal to 1 half e to the x plus 3 halves e to the negative x. We will substitute 0 to x and the equation becomes y is equal to 1 half plus 3 halves. Then the solution will become y is just equal to 2. We will find a solution to our third equation y prime is equal to x minus y plus 5 all over x plus y minus 1. This is an exact differential equation. Solution. We will rewrite the equation into dy over dx is equal to x minus y plus 5 
all over x plus y minus 1. Multiplying both sides by x plus y minus 1 and dx gives us x minus y plus 5 quantity dx plus negative x minus y plus 1 quantity dy is equal to 0. Let m of x and y be the first term and n of x and y be the second term. Now, we will integrate m of x and y. The integral of x minus y plus 5 dx gives us x squared over 2 minus xy plus 5x plus an arbitrary constant c of y. We will differentiate this equation in terms of y and it will give us negative x plus c prime of y. And we will equate this to our second term n of x and y. So negative x plus c prime of y is equal to negative x minus y plus y. Clearly, c prime of y is equal to negative y plus 1. We will integrate both sides. Then, it will give us c of y is equal to negative y squared over 2 plus y plus a constant k. Therefore, the function will now become x squared over 2 minus xy plus 5x minus y squared over 2 plus y plus a constant a. Show that if one solution, say y is equal to u of x, of the Riccati equation y prime is equal to p of x y squared plus q of x y plus r of x is known, then y is equal to u plus 1 over z will transform this equation into a linear first order equation in the new dependent variable z. Solution. Our first step is to substitute y to u plus 1 over z. So it will give us u plus 1 over z quantity prime is equal to p of x u plus 1 over z quantity squared plus q of x u plus 1 over z plus r of x. Next, it will yield us u prime plus 1 over z quantity prime plus p of x times u squared plus 2u over z plus 1 over z squared quantity plus q of x quantity u plus 1 over z plus r of x. Then, it will give us u prime plus 1 over z prime is equal to p of x u squared plus p of x 2u over z plus p of x 1 over z squared plus q of x u plus q of x 1 over z plus rx. We just distributed the equation. And now, we will crash out the these terms. Because these terms in the left and the right side can be cancelled because u is a particular solution satisfying the equation. Thus, 1 over z prime is equal to p of x 2u over z plus p of x 1 over z squared plus q of x 1 over z. Then, we will simplify it. 1 over z prime is equal to p of x 1 over z squared plus the quantity of 2 p of x u plus q of x times 1 over z. Then, we will transpose terms to become Bernoulli's differential equation. Since we arrive at the Bernoulli's differential equation, we will transform it into a linear differential equation by deriving 1 over z prime. So, negative 2 dz over z squared dx minus the quantity of 2 p of x u plus q of x quantity 1 over z is equal to p of x 1 over z squared. We will multiply this by negative z squared. And it will give us 2 dz over dx plus 2p of x u times q of x times quantity z is equal to negative p of x. This is now a linear equation 
satisfied by the new function z. A 50 kg mass is shot from a cannon straight up with an initial velocity of 10 meters per second off a bridge that is 100 meters above the ground. If the air resistance is given by 5v, determine the velocity of the mass when it hits the ground. First, notice that when we say straight up, we really mean straight up, but in such a way that it will miss the bridge on the way back down. Here is a sketch of the situation. Notice the conventions that we set up for this problem. Since the vast majority of the motion will be in the downward direction, we decided to assume that everything acting on the downward direction should be positive. Note that we also define the zero position as the bridge, which makes the ground have a position of 100. Okay, if you think about it, we actually have, no, have two situations here. The initial phase in which the mass is rising in the air and the second phase when the mass is on its way down. We will need to examine both situations and set up an equation for each. We will do this simultaneously. Here are the forces that are acting on the object on the way up and on the way down. Notice that the air resistance needs a negative in both cases in order to get the correct sign or direction of the force. When the mass is moving upwards, the velocity is negative, yet the force must be acting in the downward direction. Therefore, the negative sign must be a part of the force to make sure that, overall, the force is positive and hence acting in the downward direction. Likewise, when the mass is moving downward, the velocity is positive. Therefore, the air resistance must also have a negative sign in order to make sure that it's negative and hence acting in the upward direction. So, the equation for each of these situations are mv prime is equal to mg minus 5v such that v of t naught is equal to 0. And in the upward direction, we have mv prime is equal to mg minus 5v where v of 0 is equal to negative 10. In the second equation, the t naught is the time when the object is at the highest point and is ready to start on the way down. Note that at this time, the velocity would be zero. Also note that the initial condition of the first differential equation will have to be negative since the initial velocity is upward. In this case, the differential equation for both of the situations is identical. This won't always happen, but in those cases where it does, we can ignore the second equation and just let the first equation govern the whole process. So let's actually plug in for the mass and gravity. We'll be using 9.8 meters per second squared for the gravity here. We'll go ahead and divide out the mass while we're at it since we'll need to do that eventually anyway. So V prime is equal to 9.8 minus 5V over 50, which is equal to 9.8 minus V over 10 such that v of 0 is equal to negative 10. This is a simple linear differential equation to solve, so we'll leave that details to you. Upon solving, we arrive at the following equation for the velocity of the object at any time t. v of t is equal to 98 minus 108e to the negative t over 10. Okay, we want the velocity of the ball when it hits the ground. Of course, we need to know when it hits the ground before we can ask this. In order to find, we will need to find the position function. This is easy enough to do. S of t is equal to the integral of v of t dt, which is equal to the integral of 98 plus 108 e to the negative t over 10 dt. Then it is equal to 98 t plus 1080e to the negative t over 10 plus a constant c. We can now use the fact that I took the convention that s of 0 is equal to 0 to find that c is equal to negative 1080. The position at any time is then s of t is equal to 98t plus 1080e to the 
negative t over 10 minus 1080. To determine the mass hits the ground, we just need to solve 100 is equal to 9080 plus 1080 e to the negative t over 10 minus 1080. So solving, we got t is equal to negative 3.32203 and t is equal to 5.98147. We've got two solutions here, but since we are starting things at t is equal to 0, the negative is clearly the incorrect value. Therefore, the mass hits the ground at t is equal to 5.98147 seconds. The velocity of the object upon hitting the ground is then V of 5.98147 is equal to 38.61841 meters per second.